Welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things slow living through motherhood, homeschooling, and my newest adventure, homesteading. Today is going to be such an exciting day because we are getting our soil blocks ready as well as planting seeds today. And after what seems like hours and days of planning, I'm so excited to finally watch this year's garden slowly come to life. This February has been such beautiful weather. It's been quite warm, feels like a spring for most of y'all. However, we keep getting hints that March is going to be really cold. So I'm trying not to get too excited about starting my garden too early because I don't want to start putting too many seeds outdoors and then have a big frost come in March. March is usually pretty unpredictable for us here in Texas. Most of the seeds that I will be planting, I will be sowing outdoors. So I'll be waiting till after our first frost date, which here in North Texas, I'm in zone 8A. But since North Texas is so much different than all of the other zone eights I've seen, I highly recommend that you look into last frost dates for your location rather than zone dates. I find that it's much more reliable. Okay, so the seeds that I will be planting today are from Eden Brothers, and I really like Eden Brothers. I felt like they had a really good, reliable germination rate last year. I really enjoyed Johnny seeds as well. Most of the Johnny seeds that I have, I'll be planting outdoors after the frost date. I also will be planting some seeds from Florette. I have some that I'll be sowing outside as well, but I'm really sad. Well, I'll I'm really grateful that I had extra seeds from last year because this year she's only selling a select few seeds now and they're all from her collection. And I'm, I'm really happy that she's able to do that, but I'm also sad at the same time because she had so many beautiful varieties that she had available. It really made me want to prioritize harvesting seed this year, something that I, I didn't really do. I did a little bit with some of the zinnias. Um, but not with all of my plants. So I want to be really efficient at harvesting seed this year and being able to use those seeds for the future years. So um, thank you, Florette, for having that fire boosted under me and having me want to make that a priority in my gardening. Um, and I do hope that maybe later on in the future, you do start to sell some more of your other varieties because they were so gorgeous. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the florette seeds since they're already in my hand, and I'll put a picture up here of what they look like. So we're gonna be doing the amaranth green tails. Amaranth is so pretty. Um, when you put them in bouquet, it's a beautiful like greenery. They have about a week's worth, maybe two weeks worth of base life that you can get in through this. They look really nice in the garden, very cool and fluffy. Another thing, another plant that we're going to be doing this year, which I absolutely love. Uh, these are the ornamental grass, the bunny tails. I hear some little babies coming inside. What's wrong? A spider? You want another pickle? Okay, sorry about that. So, we just shared a pickle. <laughs> So another one we're going to be planting are the ornamental grass, um, the bunny tails. You guys, you cannot get more whimsical than bunny tails flowing in the breeze. Seriously, they are so gorgeous. I, I just love, they're so sweet to me. Next, I'm doing Black Eyed Susans. This is the Chim Chimney mix. These were so pretty last year. I don't think I have any pictures from last year, um, but I'll put the picture uh, that Florette had so pretty. I love Black Eyed Susan. I, this year, I really am pushing for more flowers within my garden. I had quite a few flowers last year. My garden last year, y'all, it was, I learned many lessons last year. Let's just say that. Um, water was one uh, here in Texas. It got so flipping hot. <laughs> I cannot tell you how hot it got this summer. So bad. And by, probably by end of July, everything was just like 
there's no saving anything. And then August, everything was completely gone. Even my Cosmos, which usually like neglect, they were not flowering as well. I'm taking all those life lessons to heart and I will be working on a lot of different type of methods, I guess, within my gardening. Hopefully I'll be able to share them with you here or over on my Instagram channel. What, that was like a long tangent to go off of. I'm doing lots of flowers again this year. Black Eyed Susans just look so beautiful in the garden. They do really well here in Texas. Um, so I'm planning on having a lot of those. Um, but this, this Black Eyed Susan, that was just a really pretty mix to me. The last one I'll be planting from Florette today is the Closia, which this is the Texas Plume Summer Sherbert mix. You guys, this was so gorgeous. And I know, I'm pretty sure she is selling some of the Closia online still but not this, not this one. And this one is so gorgeous. And of course, because I'm from Texas, I had to get some Texas, Texas plume, but oh, the colors are just so magical as you can see right here. Ah, oh, so gorgeous. So those are all gonna be the, the seeds from Florette onto Eden Brother seeds. So today we're gonna be planting some sweet pepper. We have the big red bell, sweet peppers. So I have a few tomato plants that I will be planting as well. We have the San Moranzo and the Roma, and those are gonna be mainly used for making tomato sauce, tomato paste, and maybe salsa and things like that. That's really where I like to enjoy my tomatoes. I have a hard time eating tomatoes raw quite often, and I'm trying to force myself to like it because as a young child, I used to hate mushrooms, onions, and tomatoes, and I love mushrooms and I love onions now, Tomatoes are still hard for me to just eat like raw. So I'm trying um, and that is why I got the heirloom rainbow mixture um, of the tomato seeds. Now I tried to grow these last year and I did an awful job. I did not get one tomato. I did really bad with my tomatoes and I don't think they got enough water. I don't think I fertilized them enough. So um, we're gonna try differently with the tomatoes this year. But heirloom tomatoes are so pretty to me and they are the reason why I'm going to tell myself I like raw tomatoes. <laughs> so I will be making myself eat these because they're just so gorgeous. Next, I got some cucumber seeds. So we're gonna do the Ponset 76. And for, for the cucumbers and the squashes, because the rest of these seeds, oh no, not all of them, hold on. Okay, so for the squashes and cucumbers, I'm actually doing an experiment this year. I'm going to do half of them in soil blocks and then the other half I will be planting outside sowing. I've heard from a couple of farmers that planting outside um, that they do better sowing them outdoors. So I'm gonna see for myself which one I felt like had a better yield or better germination rate. So with the cucumbers, like I said, the poinsett, 76. Now the rest of these squashes are summer squashes. I have the scallop blend. These are so cute. I cannot wait. I was on Pinterest for like hours looking up all these recipes you can cook with them. And they look fair. At first they looked kind of challenging to cut up, but they're actually quite soft and um, pretty easy to cut up. So they're really versatile in recipes and they just look so pretty. So I got that. I have um, another squash that's a Melody blend. And then I have the Lungo Bianco Cylindrical. And those are gonna be all of the summer squashes I have. Now I do have some winter squashes. I will be planting those later on. I have a ton of butternut squash because your girl loves butternut squash. And this year I also have a ton of pumpkins. I have a pumpkin patch. So here's my little, I don't know if y'all can see it, but this is my garden. And right here is my door to get in my garden. I have my little raised beds. And then right here, I'm going to be having my little pumpkin patch. So I'll be planting that in June. I, is it June? Yeah. I'm so excited. I wanted to do a pumpkin patch. Was it last year? I wanted to do my pumpkin patch last year. And I can't remember. I missed the date to start planting them. And then it was just too late. So this is the year. I also am going to have like a little bit of a watermelon or a couple of watermelons that I'll be planting in mid-March and they'll have their own little mounds kind of over in this area. So excited, y'all. But yeah, maybe I'll, I'll do a little close up of this so you can kind of see, don't judge my handwriting, I'm a lefty. Okay. Okay, so moving on. So a couple of the herbs that we'll be planting today, I'm doing valerian, St. John's wort, 
lemon balm and some lavender. And then, oh, I have one more. This is actually from Botanical Interest and this is um, Aster. So it's a China Aster blend. I've never grown Aster, but these look so dainty and whimsical. I don't know if y'all, it's not zooming in, hold on. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna be growing these. I'm so excited because they look so pretty. And so those are all the seeds we'll be planting today. So we are going to go outdoors and I have a little confession to make. I actually filmed this video yesterday and <laughs> I had everything planned. It was all outdoors and I actually had not turned my microphone on and <laughs> it was so windy, you guys. And I'm talking in this wind, thinking that my mic is going to pick everything up. No, you guys, my mic did not pick up anything. All my phone picked up was the wind. And it had my voice, but very, no. So I decided to re-record indoors for y'all. But I do have some B-roll that I'll be shooting for you guys of the soil blocks and how I did them. I think I did share the recipe on there. But honestly, you guys need to go check out Blossom and Branches Farm on YouTube. She has a ton of different recipes that she has shared. She's tried all of her recipes. She shows you the results of them. That way you can choose which recipe fits you and your lifestyle best. We did the wool method. We have wool pellets. Uh, they worked pretty well last year. It's a slow release of nitrogen and it the wool worked as a binder um, to mix in with the soil. But the main reason we did it again was not only was it, it produced good plants and germination rate, but I bought a big ass bag of wool last year. I did not realize how big the bag was, but y'all, the bag is like huge. I will have wool for the rest of my life. <laughs> so I gotta figure out some other ways to use this wool because <laughs> I have a lot of it. So I will be showing my planting and all of that while I am shooting this B-roll. So go grab yourself a nice cup of tea and get ready to watch some planting. <laughs> So when you're planting your seeds, if you're doing the soil blocking, you'll notice that there's already indents in the soil blocks, which is great. So all you have to do is pop a seed or two in there, depending on what your germination rate is. Sometimes I'll add like two or three per block, and then you'll just thin out as they germinate. That's all that I have for today. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out. If you are planting this year, I would love to know what you're planting down below in the comments. I love hearing and seeing what everybody's able to plant throughout the world. If you're growing dahlias, please let me know because I am so dreamy over dahlias. And that's one thing, um, Texas is really hard to be able to grow those big dinner plate dahlias, but they're so gorgeous to me. So if you are able to plant dahlias, please let me know in the comments below and I will totally gawk over all of your dahlias this year. <laughs> Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Bye.